Hello and welcome to the Hobo and His Girlfriend wrestling page. Again, my name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend will be here Monday. You might get a special encore edition. My girlfriend normally sits there. Again, it's just me. I'm Hobo Tom. I'd um, like to start off the show a couple of shout outs. I would like to shout out to Timothy Murtha. Thank you for subscribing. There's your shout out. Again, um, a couple news and notes. I know this was a really heavy wrestling week, so I kind of didn't do much. I think if I'm not going to wrestling shows, none of any new pictures. There's a couple old ones I'm going to post up. Again, especially if it's a really light week. Next week's going to be a weird week because it's the Raw and SmackDown Superstar Shuffle or Draft or whatever it's called. So I don't know how that's that's, that's going to be interesting. Oh, it is Thursday, though. You all know what happened on Thursday. So be a <coughs> Ah, here's good. Uh, I know on towards the beginning of May, two big wrestling shows are coming. There's going to be NXT coming here to Daytona Beach. Do not buy any more tickets only because all the front row tickets are already sold out. So I'm going to try and get general admission tickets. Hopefully I don't have to work that day or collect anything. Also, towards the end of May, not really a, a sponsor of the show, but did ask, and I said, I shall try. You have Southern Pro Lucha Libre is coming to Daytona Beach. And I'm going to get you more information on that. I think that's going to happen more towards the end of May. So again, like, subscribe, and we'll see how things go. Um, for today's show, we're just doing kind of a recap. It was WrestleMania recap heavy. So I just want to go over some main points that happened on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, and after WrestleMania, I kind of got wrestled out for a while. Just like that thing, once the football season ends, I need, I need a little time to recover. And you get, you, get, you get your fix, but then it's just time to move on. So the first thing, again, Raw, really good show. Um, a lot of matches, a lot of recaps, a lot of good call-ups. I think they finally did this right for a change with the call-ups. So you have Steph. She shows up, and you have to like the crowd after WrestleMania. I mean, New Orleans is a good crowd, don't get me wrong. Philadelphia is probably the best, the best beer. after WrestleMania crowd. Uh, Steph comes out, the whole crowd chants, you tapped out, you tapped out, you tapped out. This was a really hot crowd, and that's that's always good to see because you want your crowds to have life, you want energy, you you want them doing stuff. It's it just makes it more fun that way. So again, Steph came out, kind of ran down somewhat the crowd, said, "Look how look how great I made Ron, Ronda Rousey look," and then of course the bullshit, bullshit. Ronda Rousey came out. Again, really good pop. She had a really good match. I think I gave it my filet mignon match. Again, came out. And again, she just looks like she's having the time of her life. I mean, she's having fun. I think they're just trying to set this up to an old school Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Vincent K. McMahon thing. And we'll see how it goes. It should be fun. Again, I'm a little bit on the older side, so I remember that. But if you're a younger crowd, you don't know anything about that. So at, at least, at least to a younger crowd, it's new. Then we have a Nia Jax segment, and again, nice hot crowd. You deserve it. And again, it's, it's just really cool to see the, the crowd be appreciative of the wrestlers' efforts. Um, Alexa Bliss with Mickey James. Came out, and of course, you hear asshole, asshole. And then Nijak says, No, it was, it was a setup for the tag team match. It was, it was a really fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. And Bliss and James come up and said, Well, who is your partner? And everyone goes, Who, 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 who? 
Lo and behold, Ember Moon music hits. Ember Moon call up. Deserves it. Okay, pretty good. Can't complain. She dropped her title, NXT. Probably about just about the right time for it. Hit the eclipse. I mean, really good, really good showing by Ember Moon. Um, I've heard people say makes nine jacks look weak. You know what? If if you're gonna come out as anyone tag team partner, you might as well be the champions partner. Again, that was a good cheeseburger match. And there we have a backstage seg segment. Braun Strowman and, and little Nicholas kind of hiding behind his leg, relinquish the belts. Set up for a tag team tournament. Not bad. It was fun. Little kid says, "I'm you're gonna get these hands one day." It's like, good luck to you, kid. Then you have another call up. No way, Jose. No way, Jose. No way, Jose. Came out, took on some jobber. Ham sandwich match. Um, probably a little too early for Noah Jose. I don't know what his ceiling is going to be. Probably not. Probably not that high. I don't even even know if you get a mid mid card title or something. Good to see him though. Again, one of those things I can look back and say, "Hey, I have pictures of Noah Jose when he was in XT." So again, it was good. Again, a ham sandwich match. I mean, what do you expect with No Way Jose and a jobber guy? This is what it was, ham sandwich. Then you have the revival in the club. And this disappoints me. I don't, don't know why they do the things they do, but they gave them both jobber entrances. After commercially, just see these two teams wrestling, like half the action's gone. Again, from what you can see, the club and the revival are really good. They have good chemistry. It's just. Why? Why not have them as a feature? Instead, they're just they get job or entrance. The revival went over. Anderson is supposedly the, the the best the best roster you would never tell on WWE. You'd have to go back. You'd have to go back to New Japan. But I mean, all he does is, is lose and gets pinned. And needs pins. I'm I'm sure he can. And from hearing things on the internet, he he's a great wrestler. But why? I mean, they are b b b bullet club, club for life. Too sweet. And then revival went over. They move on in the tag team tournament that they're holding. I forget who they're gonna face. I was just like, blah. I'm gonna sign to get something to eat, use the bathroom or something. Then we had an in ring segment, I think. Yeah, with uh, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor. Again, Seth Rollins got the really big pop. The whole audience went, burn it down, burn it down, burn it down. Finn Balor came out, huge pop. Too sweet, too sweet, too sweet. And kind of just said, you know what, Seth? You might have won the belt. Didn't pin me. I want a match against you. Miss comes out and said, hold, 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 hold it. I'm invoking my rematch. I think it's going to be not a backlash, but I think it's going to be at the greatest Royal Rumble they have in Saudi Arabia. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Now I want to my life. I was a bad hobo. Do not do bad things. Warning to all you YouTubers out there. Although you can't drink beer and belch, especially on beer ration Thursday. So from there, you get a woman's match, Banks and Mandy Rose. It was a good match. It was a it was, it was a cheeseburger match. I still don't know who they're going to turn face, or or actually turn heel. Who's going to stay face between Banks and Bailey? Bailey does kind of like the, the oops, I'm sorry, I punched you. I was swinging at her. Mandy Rose, I think, took a really nasty bump. It was a couple, I think there was a botch. It wasn't, Mandy Rose was never that great of a wrestler. I think the, the one thing is that the WWE, whoever does their creative wardrobe, 
kind of should stay away from that nude yellow color for women's tights. It, it makes them look naked down there. And again, it's 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 an okay look, I guess. I mean, eh. My girlfriend looks at that and says, well, I know what you're looking at. I just say, no, honey, I'm watching the wrestling. Uh, I only look at you because you're my sweetie. Oh, you call me my sweetie. Yep. Again, Bailey got involved, so you don't know who's going to be heel. It was so so. After this match, it was kind of heartfelt because Paige did have her kind of retirement speech. That was pretty cool. I mean, the crowd was really good. You never know how the crowd's going to react to stuff like this. Uh, they, they just hinted, this is your house. This is your house. And you can almost see her about get ready to tear up. I didn't realize that she was only in the WWE for four years. And, I mean, she's young. I want to say she's 25 or 26. And again, that's one reason why I never wanted to be a pro wrestler is that you have such a short career. I mean, you're only really one nasty fall botch away from being retirement. And again, I, I do give them mad props. Again, I've done my one moonsault. Scared, scared the beard out of my friend. And his eyes got big and he saw his death as I came flying off the top rope. But again, a story. He, he can be that probably better than I can because he was looking up. And I was looking kind of backwards. Uh, from there, you have Elias. Again, <laughs> Elias is so good at running down crowds. New Orleans just, just ate it up. They started to clap with him. He's like, stop clapping. And he just, again, he just looks like he's having the time of his life. He was interrupted, however, by Bobby Lashley, who made his debut. So that's, no, three debuts. Yep, three debuts. Wow, one more to go. That's a lot for NXT. But, again, it was a good match. Elias did the job. Bobby Lashley looked great. Held him up there forever. And the delayed suplexes. They say for three minutes. It's probably a good minute, it seemed like that. Then we go to a backstage segment between Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Kurt Angle. But the funniest thing to take out of this, and it's just probably a zinger at the competition, those two are, in theory, fired. But he says, hey, TNA's hiring. Oh! And those are kick. Then you have the Authors of Pain make their debut back up to the main roster. And this was really cool. They, they took out a jobbing Heath Slater and Rhino. It is what it is, what you expect. Has to torture them. But the cool part is, as they were going back up the ramp, they just said, Paul, we got it. And kind of left Paul Ellering there. And, and we'll see. I, I know his daughter wrestles. Not too sure how involved he is in NXT. But again, it's, 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 it's good for them. Again, I, I can say I've seen them wrestle. So that makes me happy. I can, so that's a couple of people I've seen wrestle on the big stage. That's pretty cool. Roman Ring comes out, and I don't know why they did this to him, but he literally got booed out of the stadium. Again, he comes out, jeers and jeers. Like he said when um, I got my ass, the whole crowd said, you deserve it. I got busted open. You deserve it. They're just vicious. Joe comes out, everyone says, Joe, 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 Joe. And to his Godzilla Destroyer music, which is really cool. The techno Godzilla music is kind of cool. Again, it's just good to see Joe back from his injury. It's good to see him back in the mix. Mix. We'll, we'll see what happens. Again, probably just to recap the Elias versus Lashley. Eh, that was like a cheeseburger match. Page, no, not Page, but um, Banks, Mandy Rose match. That's a cheeseburger match. Overall, it was a pretty, it was, it was an entertaining show. 
mean, minus like the first opening, well, first match. What do you expect from a squash match? Was that a squash match? No. Yeah, no, it wasn't too bad. I don't know if it was any of that. was a half a ham sandwich, maybe with a pickle on it. But then we, <laughs> we had what I think is the filet mignon of matches. And that's only because it was probably the most entertaining match of the night. You had Titus Worldwide come out. And they were taking on Woken Matt and Woken Bray. And it started off in the backstage. Then all of a sudden, the, the lights went out. Bray Wyatt's music pops. And they materialize. Lights, lights come back on. You see him standing there. Probably not for the wrestling reasons, but just for the pure entertainment, I gave it a, the flaming yawn. Because again, to start off, they had the dueling chance, which if you ever witnessed dueling chance, it can be really good. I know I saw the dueling chance from the Hardy Boys. They were broken, broken Hardys versus the Young Bucks. Go so delete, too sweet, obsolete. Suck it. And just went back and forth for a good five minutes. The crowd ate it up. In this match, there was Titus Worldwide Delete. Titus Worldwide Delete. Titus Worldwide Delete. And then the match started, and it was really fun. Um, the, the, again, you had, had Titus O'Neil and... Wow, I forget his name now. Apollo Crews, that's it. Apollo Crews did, did his kip up. And in true Woken fashion, Matt and Bray just say, Wonderful! In this clip, Wonderful! Wonderful! And it was just fun. It was fun. That's why I gave it the, the flaming on. I, I was really entertained. It was good ring work. The wrestling was good. It made me smile. And... That's all you want. You want to be entertained, and, and that was truly entertaining. In fact, at home, I caught myself doing the chance with the crowd. And if I, if they can elicit that kind of emotion through a TV screen, you're getting the Flay Mignon match of the night. Even though the wrestling Flay Mignon match came next, when it was Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn because of the chat because of the stipulation Kurt Angle put out there, he only had room for one more. On the raw roster, that you two fight it out. This is a flaming on as far as wrestling goes. This this could have been a main event. This could have been highlight any pay per view. They could have done this at Backlash. They could have done this at the World's Greatest Royal Rumble. We got it for free. And I'm kind of looking forward to, and it's probably not going to happen, but they really need to do a Kevin Steen. And El Generico, I guess, just just to get over this you were fired thing. Again, you had the chance. Kevin Owens is one one of the best talkers in the ring ever. Just hear him trash talk. The crowd loved the crowd loved it. They're going, Ole, 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 ole. And it was fun. It was a flaming on match. And it's not even the main event, which is amazing. Because the next match, this was a surf and surf match. It wasn't a bad, wasn't a bad match. It wasn't a fillet. Well, again, this could have been. No, this was kind of a main, main event for Raw. It's a, it's a six man cluster tag. You had the Mistrage, Rollins, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, and a returning Jeff Hardy who got the biggest pop ever. And in fact, one of the funny segments, I think, right before this, it was Jeff Hardy, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins in, in the back of the arena kind of getting ready for the match, I guess, heading to Gorilla. And and they say, Woken Meth! And Woken Bray! And they just say, Brother Nero! How are you doing? Yes! And he, he gets a big brotherly hug. Even Woken Bray's Brother Nito, it's good to see you again. And just like, yep, yeah. Finn Balor and Seth Rollins give him that look like. 
what's that? And he's just like, it's my brother. So again, it was, it was really... Uh, this was a good match. Yeah, the Serpent's her match. Um, the Ivy Face got their spot in on the heels. It was good. Can't complain about it. It was fun, good, good, go home. Hey. Can't complain sometimes. So again, that was the Raw review. Next up, we're going to have the SmackDown review. And before we start our SmackDown review, I just want to reiterate, like, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you leave a comment or now if you're subscribing or send an email, so that's three ways to get a shout out. You will get your shout out here online. Again, thank you very much to Martha. That one goes, that shout out goes out to you. Thank you for subscribing. Again, if you go online, look up Southern Pro Lucha Libre. That's going to be coming to Daytona Beach soon, and hopefully I'll have some more information as we get closer to that. Now we go to SmackDown. And again, this was a really fun sh fun show, just like Raw. I mean, you had some call-ups. Had, had a couple good moments. I'm probably... Well, we'll, we'll all get to things. The show started off with Shane O'Mac. Gets a big prop from, from the crowd, and the biggest thing is that he knows how to get the crowd excited for the day. He introduced Paige as the new general manager. Kind of, they, I love the way he did it because he's like, well, who should be general manager? And you're like, woo, 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 woo. Paige's music comes out, the whole place pops. And, and again, it was, it's, I feel good for her. I mean, 25 years old, she's still doing what she loves, which is great. And just just give her pops. Um, there, she also knows how to get pops from a crowd because she books the match really based on the crowd. And I'm sure it was already predetermined, but but the match was. She's like, well, for your main event, we're going to have AJ Styles versus, and the whole crowd goes, yes, 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 Daniel Bryan, yes, yes, yes. Yes, the crowd goes absolutely bonkers, eats it up. Again, knows how to work the crowd really good. Knows how to get over. Uh, this led to our first match was a tag team match, and this was a surf and turf match. It's the Usos and New Days. Man, these two these two teams can't put on a bad show. I mean, one of them is probably going to leave SmackDown towards Raw soon. Probably the Usos will be leaving because I think they've been in SmackDown the longest. But again. You have spots galore. And this time it was Xavier Woods and Biggie. Kofi Kingston was on the outside. 
again, with this tremendous double team action, tag team wrestling as, as finest. I mean, both are so good at that. I mean, you have your super kick. I think Big E just came out fl fleeing pancakes at, like, the like whole box of pancakes at people to begin with. Again, just really entertaining. Then you have Bludgeon Brothers show up, sit, sit down, just point, just point their big hammers. and say, Yeah, it was what it was at that point. But, you know, it was a really good, fat, really good match. I can't complain. That's a surf and turf match. That's a surf and turf match any day of the week. Including Sundays. The next match, you have Naomi versus Natalia. This was a ham sandwich. It just kind of reiterated that Naomi won the women's first battle royal tournament, showed her off with a trophy. Natalia's still a great talker in the ring. I'll, I'll never take away anything from her pro wrestling abilities. I mean, she's, she's a very good wrestler. She knows how to talk in the ring, she knows how to talk to her opponent. Talk at her opponent, talk at the crowd, talk with the crowd. It's just that her voice sounds like a whiny Kmart mother or something. I like to speak to your manager. Next, we had a good line by Nakamura's vaccine interest. He just he said, "I know speaking, I know understand English." It's like, well, why did you do that? I don't understand English. All you need to say, I would love to. Charlotte Flair came out, again, has this amazing gold robe. Again, a very small nitpick of mine. It just, it just looks funny to have those nude colored trunks. But when it just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Again, she came out, look, look, it looks really amazing. Gold in the top. Had her belt. First call for SmackDown, the iconic duo. And I have videos of them. So again, it makes me feel good to know that, hey, I've seen people move up. The iconic duo comes out. They just, there's no match. They just beat up Charlotte. So hey, now, now we're in. I think other people have mentioned this. Probably I will too. For some reason, the SmackDown likes to do the, the double letters. Because it was, it was I, iconic. Like the, the Ruby Riot. I don't know, whatever. Maybe it's just the way it looks on the Again, that's someone else's and creatives who gets a lot more money than, than a hobo like me who just collects pieces of aluminum. So again, it was a really good match. They just run down Charlotte and just beat her down. And this really set up like the, the, the one true probably ham sandwich. Carmella, after the iconic duo did her dirty work, came out. Cashed in. The referee looked thoroughly confused. I have no idea why for a promo a referee would be in the ring anyway. But Carmella cashed in. Again, great heel look. Kind of kicked the, the, the dirt, on, dirt on the mat on to Charlotte when she was over. And it was a ham sandwich. Because the referee was like, really? You want to cash in? What am I supposed to do with a briefcase? It's like, oh, you're cashing in? It's like, well, what am I supposed to do now? She's like, I'm cashing in, I'm cashing in. Like, swing the bell. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't know if he's going to be a transitional champion or not. Or if it gives something for Charlotte to do, or Becky Lynch or Naomi. Those are the only few, I think, that could really hold the belt with any great importance. The money in the bank was, was a good way to get there. That's good for Carmella. And you can't feel bad for her. Next, we have a three-man tag team match for the new U.S. champion, or new number one U.S. champion. Jinder Mahal was sitting ringside. It was okay. It was, you had Rusev versus Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode gets a huge pop with Glorious. And Randy Orton, Orton, Orton was interrupted doing his pose. By Aiden English because it's Rusev Day, but it's not Rusev Day because Randy Orton hit the RKO and it's a Randy Orton RKO match. Yeah, it was it was good though. There were good spots. I thought Rusev was gonna win when he hit Bobby Roode in the accolade, and that that would have been good. Then Randy Orton broke that up, tossed Rusev out again. I guess the good thing is Rusev's not 
eating the RKOs. I don't think Rusev ate the RKO. I think Rude did it. But he can. He, he, he's a pro. Um, Carmella had a great interview. Again, just working on the mic. AJ Styles interview. He's like, I don't care about Shinsuke. Whatever happens, happened. I have to focus on Daniel Bryan. It's the first time you've ever actually seen a wrestler focus on who their opponent is. And again, this was the flaming mignon of matches. This is such a good match. But again, this puts a smile on my face because now I can say, you know what? Now I've seen AJ Styles. I've seen Daniel Bryan in person. Now I can say, I, hey, I've seen them wrestle on, on, on TV too. And that was just the thrill. I think they wrestled once, I think in Chicago when they did the King of Trios. I think. But again, that, that, that's a six man tag, very, very Lucha Libre style match. Again, it was, it was fun back then. I'll, I'll, again, feel free to leave a comment, see if I'm right or if I'm wrong. They've probably wrestled in the independence somewhere else before. I, I wouldn't doubt that, but I have a funny feeling it was in the King of Trios tournament in Shakara. So again, please comment to see if I'm right or wrong, or leave an email saying, Hobo Tom, go back there and collect aluminum, you don't know what you're talking about, or saying, Hobo Tom, you got something right. Again, really great back and forth action, very fast paced. I think they gave it a good 20 minutes. It's always hard to tell with, with all the entrances and commercials sometimes. Actually, I think for this match, there weren't any commercials, which is amazing. Great counter-wrestling. If, if you want to see two people put on a wrestling clinic, this is the match to watch. Shinsuke came out. With the death there, finish, everyone. Nobody wins. Again, it was still a flaming on match if you just watched these two wrestle. Again, amazing technical wrestlers. And I can say I've seen them both on TV. I've seen them both live. I have pictures of them, videos of them. More so of when Daniel O'Brien was when, was when he was a general manager. But again, he was, in, he was in the ring, or at least directing traffic, with AJ Styles. Again, this is, this is going to be a dream match. This should be the WrestleMania 35 main event, Daniel O'Brien versus AJ Styles. Who would not pay big big money to see that. And not Brock Lesnar big. This is five times Brock Lesnar big money. I mean, that's that's the money match of money matches. So you're going to have every mark in the known universe, universal galaxy. That thing. And then he came in, back, referring back to his chaos days in New Japan. It was good, though. It was an, it was, it was an excellent match. I enjoyed it. Shinsuke did what he wanted to do. He got booed. No one's going to boo AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. They would just do, yes, 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 yes. And they would get tired of that. Be AJ Styles, yes, yes, yes. AJ Styles, yes, yes. And really great match. So that's really the recap for both Raw and SmackDown this week. I know it's kind of that weird week because of WrestleMania. I put, put up a lot of videos there. Again, please feel free to like and subscribe to the videos. The email, if you do want to send an email, you will get it read online. We get your shout out, you comment and everything. And again, the email is hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. I don't know. I'm, I may put up some older videos I have, maybe at the time. Maybe the second time I took my nephews to an NXT event because I have videos for that. Eventually I'm going to put up the time that I took my girlfriend to a SmackDown event in Orlando. But again, please like, comment, and subscribe. Do not forget, hopefully you'll get videos probably later. At least probably that second week of May. Again, NXT is coming back to town. Daytona Beach area. Day Daytona Beach, May 5th, I believe. So it's a Cinco de Mayo. Be interesting to see if Jose. No way Jose is there for Cinco de Mayo. Or if Andrade is in Almas. And Tranquilo. And also, towards the end of May, there's going to be Southern Pro Lucha Libre. And they're going to be coming to Daytona Beach. 
nice, good, fun indie event. Again, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and send, send emails. I'm going to go get some more aluminum. Bye. And drink beer.